Hello, my name is Pastor Tim Brewington, and I am the pastor of Fellowship Church. At Fellowship Church, we're just ordinary people who have experienced extraordinary life in Jesus Christ. And our mission is to tell others what we have experienced so that they too can experience this wonderful Jesus that we serve. I would like to send a personal invitation to you, your friends, and your family to join us at one of our worship services. You will find that we are a community of believers that focus on the word of God, worship, and praise. During our worship services, we believe in just letting the Holy Spirit have his way. So please join us at one of our worship services. God bless you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the promise of new. Your word says, any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Your word says that you will do a new thing in us. So we thank you today for the newness that's coming to our lives today. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that we are in the center of your will and your purpose and your plan for our lives are being performed. Even if we don't see it or understand it, we know by faith that all things work together for the good to them that love you and are the called according to your purpose. Hallelujah. So we say, God, have your way in us. Let your purpose be fulfilled in us. Your word says that he who has begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Christ. So we thank you that you are performing everything that you started in us. Hallelujah. You started it and you will finish it. Hallelujah. And we thank you that nothing can change your mind about us. Nothing can change your plan for us. Hallelujah. We we thank you for what is getting ready to happen in this place and in our lives. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We sit with expectation of what you're going to do in this place. These blessings we ask and receive them now as we prepare our hearts to receive your word. Open our hearts and our minds to receive everything that you speak to us today. Let every morsel of word fall on good ground in this place and we declare that it will produce the fruit of righteousness the fruit of power it will not return to you void but it will accomplish everything you have sent it to do we receive it now in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. We'll read that in a few minutes. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. Today I want to start a sermon series called limitless life the foundation of this series is john chapter 10 verse 10 where jesus says the thief cometh but to steal kill and destroy but i come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly i love this this verse because he said there's two people coming the thief is coming and he has an objective to steal kill and destroy but i come whenever you see but it means you don't have to pay too much attention to what came before the but because what comes after the but is greater than what came before it uh, I'm, I'm going too fast. Let me slow down here. But Jesus says, in spite of what he came to do, yeah. he came to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. Yeah. But I come, 
Hallelujah. I want you to understand my motive behind coming. I come that you might have life. And not just life, but abundant life. Like we're not just survivors. We are thrivers. Huh? I don't believe it's God's will for our life to be dull, boring, empty, and unproductive. I don't believe that it's God's will for our testimony to be a barely making it kind of testimony. And I barely made it through the day and I barely made it through the week and I barely made it through my 20s and I'm barely making it through my 40s. That is not our testimony. Our testimony is not that of misery and suffering and frustration. That is not abundant life. In fact, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. Now, there's much debate about what this more than conquerors means, so I'll give you this. I don't know what more than conqueror means, but I know that whatever a conqueror is, I'm more of it. Whatever it means to conquer, I'm more than that. So look at all the great conquerors in the world. Jesus said we are more than the great conquerors in this world. More than Napoleon, more than all those who have gone from one place to another. He says that we are more than conquerors. In sickness, we're more than conquerors. In poverty, we're more than conquerors. In trouble, we're more than conquerors. We don't just get through it. We destroy it on our way out. Come on, somebody. Y'all not ready for me. But, but I've been in ministry long enough to know that many believers don't live like conquerors, let alone more than conquerors. I've been in ministry long enough that many believers haven't figured out how to live the abundant life that Jesus promised to us. The church that I was growing up in, we called it living beneath your privilege in God. They used to get up, the old mothers of the church would, would get up and look at us young people and say, stop living beneath your privilege in God. It means that when you're, you're in Christ, there are certain privileges that are associated with being a part of God's family. And you have a privilege that's up here, but you're living low down and down here. They used to say, stop living beneath your privilege. Jesus promises us joy in Christ, hope in Christ, victory in Christ. And if that is not your experience, you are living beneath your privilege in God. It is your right, your inheritance as a child of God to live a life full of hope, peace, joy, and victory. That is the privilege of them that are sanctified. And so if we are not experiencing that, we are living beneath our privilege. It's like you have a million dollars in the bank, but you're borrowing money from everybody else. <laughs> and that's how you keep your money. But you, you borrow... <laughs> Huh? You, you have a need. You have a, a great need and you have the resources available to you to meet that need. But you're not using what God has for you. Hmm. One of the privileges is abundant life. And I don't believe that abundant life is just in heaven. But I believe that abundant life starts the moment we receive Jesus Christ. That the moment you receive him, you have access to that abundant life. So I believe that it is God's will for us to live a limitless life. A life without limits. That there is nothing that God tells us that we don't believe. There's no instruction that God gives us to do that we're not able to do. That if he puts it in us, we can conquer it no matter what comes our way. There is no limit to the type of life we can have because Jesus said, I 
come that you will have abundant life. So I've been, in my downtime, I've been trying to figure out what are the elements necessary to live this abundant life. And I found four things that the limitless life will consist of. First of all, you will have limitless faith. Then you will have limitless wisdom. Then there's limitless grace. And finally, there's limitless love. So no end to faith, no end to wisdom, no end to grace, and no end to love. So today I want to talk about limitless faith, faith without limits. One of my favorite uh, gospel singers is Vanessa Bell Armstrong. And she sang, sang a song, wrote it in the, in the 80s, song called Faith. And in that song called Faith, she describes what limitless faith looks like. She says, it's faith that sees the invisible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible, reaches the unreachable, fights the unbeatable, removes the unmovable, stands the invincible, faith that can conquer anything. Hallelujah. Yeah. Limitless faith sees, expects, receives, reaches, fights, removes, and conquers anything. Limitless faith says there is nothing out of reach. There is nothing that can't be moved. There is no adversary that can't be beat. And we see the invisible and we expect the incredible. When is the last time you expected something incredible to happen in your life? Why is it that we can pray and seek God's face and don't expect the incredible? How is it that we can go after him and have limitless faith to the point where we don't believe that God can do the very thing that we are asking him to do? I don't know about you, but I want limitless faith. A faith that has no limits. The Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, after going through all that he, is, he went through, here is what he used to describe the mindset of limitless faith. Philippians 4, 12, New Living Translations, Paul says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Verse 13, he says, for I can do everything through Christ, who gives me the strength. <laughs> That's what limitless faith looks like. Limitless faith says there is, there is no limit because I have learned how to live on nothing or everything. Limitless faith says I know how to work on a full stomach or an empty stomach. <laughs> I know how to get things done with plenty or nothing. Limitless faith says I can do all of this 
because I know that Christ is going to give me strength. Limitless faith says just because I don't have enough money doesn't mean I can't do it. Just because I don't know how to do it doesn't mean that it can't get done. Just because I'm not getting enough support doesn't mean that it can't be done. Limitless faith said I have learned how to live in every situation and limitless life makes it so that you don't allow your situation to determine how you're living. Come on. Come on, somebody. Listen, when I grew up, I thought everybody in my family was rich. <laughs> I said, and I didn't find out till later that they were working a couple of jobs and that they were um, pinching and they would take $5 and my grandmother can go to the store with $20 and feed 20 people like a dollar a person because what? She learned how to live with plenty or little because you got a choice here, saints. You can even look around yourself and say, woe is me. I only have a little bit of this. I don't have enough of that. I never had this, so I can't do anything. Or you can say, through Christ will give me the strength to figure out how to get this done. Whether they give me a student loan or not. Whether I get a grant or not. Whether I get the job or not. Whether I have friends or not. I am going to know how to get it done. Why? Because Christ is going to give me strength. See, we must rely on Christ to give us strength. Can I say this? Some of us have gone into 2018 worn out because we relied on our own strength in 2018. I have decided for 2019, I'm not going to depend on my strength. I'm going to depend on the strength that I receive from Christ. Here's the foundation of limitless faith. It's realizing that there is nothing that Christ can't do. Therefore, if he gives you strength, there is nothing that you cannot do. Yeah. If you are relying on your strength, yes, you will be weak. But the foundation of limitless faith says that there is nothing that I can't do. Why? Because Christ is giving me strength. And I found, and I, I won't be too much longer here, but I found that there are, there are two things we must practice in order to develop limitless faith. Faith. I'm going to give you some practical ways to develop limitless faith. The first thing, you must develop the practice of hearing the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Paul makes it clear here that if you want to strengthen your faith, you must hear the word of God. There's no quick fix to this. There's no pill you can take called the extra strength faith pill that you can take. There's no juice that you can drink. The only way you're going to build your faith is you must feed your faith the word of God. You must spend time reading, studying, hearing, and meditating on the word of God. Your faith can only be as strong as your knowledge of the word of God. If you are naming things and claiming things that are not in the word of God, that is called wishful thinking. But faith. Faith takes the truth that is revealed in Scripture and says to God what he already said. Listen, God doesn't have to do anything your grandmother said. He doesn't have to do anything the songwriter said. He don't have to do anything the old wives tale says. The only thing he has to do is what he says. And if you build your faith on what he says, his word will never disappoint you. Hmm. You want strong faith? Meditate on his word. Study his word. 
let me, let me say this, that hearing the word of God is not just a cognitive experience. It's not about memorizing verses and translations and knowing if I say Romans 12, 4, you know where it, that is. If I say 1 Corinthians 1, 13, you know exactly what that says. That's not what I'm talking about. Hearing the word of God creates possibilities of a new life for you. When you hear the word of God, when it gets into your spirit, it creates new expectations for you. Listen, it gives you a new view of what life can be like. And here's how I know that it's true. The Bible tells us that the world was formed, how? With the word of God. He spoke and the worlds were formed. Everything that exists, exists because God spoke it into existence, which means God, and the Bible tells us this in Genesis, that God spoke into nothing and created something powerful. And that's what happens when you hear the word of God. He will speak to the nothingness of your life and create something wonderful and powerful. It will speak directly to that place in your life that has not been able to produce anything and it will create new expectations and new possibilities. Listen, I was nothing until I heard God's word. I was empty until I heard God's word. I didn't love myself until I heard God's word. Well, I have been quoting scripture since I was six, but I didn't hear it until I was 13. And at 13, I heard the word and it created new possibilities, new expectations for my life. He says, I don't care what family you were born in, I'll make you new. I don't care what your handicap is, I'll give you power. I don't care what your disability is, I'll make you able. The word of God created new expectations of what my life could be. That's why the old folks used to sing, life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved, saved, saved. One, one more song. I got a lot of songs today. One songwriter said, somebody told me about the joy that they had. Somebody told me that in sorrow, they can be glad. But I didn't think it could be until it happened to me. Hallelujah. And that's what happens when you hear the word of God in your spirit. He will heal you where you are hurting. Bring peace to where you are troubled clarity to where you are confused and whatever you have found yourself in the word of God will point you the way out hearing the word is so important that Jesus said in Matthew 4 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God hmm. this verse tells us that eating food is not enough to stay alive. It says you can eat your fruits and your, your vegetables and your lean meats and still be dead because Jesus said that's not enough to be alive. <laughs> he says you cannot live off of bread alone but your life Hear me, your life depends on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Your peace depends upon it. Your hope depends upon it. Your strength depends upon it. The clarity of your life depends upon it. Your purpose depends upon it. You have no purpose unless you've heard what God thinks your purpose is. Your very life depends upon everything. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You cannot survive without it. So I'm challenged here. Because if the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then I say that I should spend as much time in the word 
as I do eating. Uh oh, don't roll your eyes. We got 20 more minutes. <laughs> huh? What if every time you ate your natural food, you ate spiritual food? What if if you eat three times a day, you study the word three times a day? And if you don't have time to study the word, you don't have time to eat. Because I hear you already, Pastor, I don't have time to do that. But here's what I know. People always make time to do what's important to them. Hmm? I don't care how busy you are. Eventually, you're going to take some time and eat something. Hmm? What if you received the challenge that in 2019, every time you eat natural food, you're going to eat spiritual food? Let me just say, say this too. That listening to sermons are good. Reading Bible vlogs or blogs are good. Listening to your favorite preacher is good. But there is nothing like going into a room by yourself with no music and nobody else, opening up that Bible and letting the Holy Spirit speak directly to you. There is nothing like it in the world. Hmm? Listen to me on Sunday morning is not enough. It's a good place to start. It's like a vitamin, but it cannot be your main course. Hmm? You have to spend time in the word of God. If you want to build your faith, you must spend time in the word of God. The second thing, the second thing you must practice in order to have limitless faith is that you must develop a practice of respect responding to the word of God. In other words, if you're going to read it, then you must do what it says. Hmm? You must practice what it says. There's no sense of reading it if you're not going to do what it says. Faith is not what you believe. It's what you respond to. Faith is not what you believe, it's what you respond to. You can believe that there is a God. You can believe that there is a heaven and a hell. But you also can live like there is no God. And live like there is no heaven or hell. There is a difference between believing that there is a God and putting your faith in God. When you put your faith in God, you respond to what he says. We have a lot of people who believe in God, but don't pray, don't read their Bible, they're not thinking about coming to church, not thinking about anything that Jesus said. Listen, acknowledging that there is a God is not enough. When you put your faith in him, that means when he speaks, you respond. When we look throughout the scripture, faith always require a response. James says, faith with our works is dead. What are you doing with your faith? Faith requires a response. Faith is when God speaks, you respond. Limitless faith, here we go, means that there is no limit to what you will respond to when God speaks. There is no limit to what you will respond to when God speaks. The greater your faith, the greater your response. People who have great faith have great responses to the word of God. There are some people who have heard the word and they have given everything they have for the sake of the gospel. There are some people where there is no limit to what they will respond to. If God said it, they're going to do it without hesitation. And then there's the rest of us. 
not trying to offend nobody, but there's a limit oftentimes to what we will respond to. God, I'll go pray for that person, but I'm not going to pray for that person over there. There's a limit to the risk that we are willing to take for the gospel. There's a limit to how much money we're going to give. There's a limit to how much of our time we're going to offer up. There's a limit to how much of our own dreams we're going to give up for the sake of the gospel. There's a limit to how much we're going to take from these church people. And there's a limit to how much we're going to put up with. There's a limit to how much we're willing to be embarrassed for the sake of the gospel. There's a limit to how much we are going to sacrifice. But I come to tell somebody that if you want to take your faith to the next limit, that you've got to remove the limits off of God and say, God, there is no longer a limit to what I will respond to. Limitless faith does not limit how we allow God to use us. Limitless faith remove the limits. Limitless faith says, if God wants me to do it, I will, no matter what, because Christ is going to give me strength. Limitless faith says, nothing is too hard. Limitless faith realizes that everything was impossible until somebody did it. Hmm, hear what I'm saying? Limitless faith doesn't look at something and says, that's not, it's never been done before, so I'm not going to be able to do it. Listen, flying was impossible until somebody did it. Open heart surgery was impossible until somebody did it. Lights without fire was impossible until somebody did it. Warm in the winter was impossible and cool in the summer was impossible until somebody did it. And being raised from the dead was impossible until somebody did it. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Limitless faith says there is nothing impossible. And if it looks impossible, you know everything started off as impossible. The car that you drove in was impossible until Ford figured it out. huh? Architects, this building that we are in was impossible until somebody figured it out. And what I'm saying to you is limitless faith says it doesn't matter if it's never been done before. If God said do it, I will do it and because Christ is going to give me the strength. Yeah. There may be somebody in this room and you can stand to your to your feet. We're done here. There may be somebody in this room here today who God is calling you to do something that's never been done before. It's never been done in your family. It's never been done in this church. It's never been done in the community. But he's calling you to respond to his word and says it is possible if you believe. I want you to think about what would your life be like if you really believed that you can do all things through Christ. Pause for a minute. Think about, imagine in your mind, what have you not done because somebody told you you can't? What have you not responded to because somebody told you that's never been done before? What makes you, you think that you're going to be able to do it? What has God spoken to you that you haven't responded to? What if the word is true that all things are possible to them that believe. What if that's true? What if you can do all things through Christ, which means you can conquer anything, you can face anything? What if it's no longer true for you to go through a test and say, God, I can't do this. It's too much for me. I can't figure out. 
Can I tell you? That's a lie. You can do it. You can get through it. You can overcome it. You are more than a conqueror. It's a lie that you're all by yourself. It's a lie that you don't have enough help. If nobody is on your side, if God before you, he's more than the world against you. Oh, can I upset somebody? Stop blaming lack of support for you not doing what God called you to do. God told you to do it. He didn't tell me to do it. He told you to do it. And if you're waiting on me to help you, you may be waiting a long time. That's why David said, I'll look to the hills from which cometh my help. All my help comes from the Lord. Oh, man, this is the year to stop waiting for something to happen. You're so frustrated with all these false prophets and their false prophecies. This is the year of this and this is the year of that and this is the year of whatever. You come up with something different every year. Here's what I'm saying to you. Respond to what God has already told you to do. You can't make the same decisions you made in 2018 and 2019 and expect things to be different. God is not going to force you into anything. He's going to speak and then you have a choice to respond or not. And I've decided, God, if you speak, I'm going to respond. I'm going to do it. Here's your assignment for this week. Practice hearing the word of God. And by practice it, I mean Study the word as often as you eat. Do that for seven days and see how your mind changes. You, you'll be surprised. It might help some of us lose some weight. <laughs> be surprised how much you eat, man. If, you, if we ate the word as much as we eat regular food, we'll be spiritual giants in here. I'm talking about me, not y'all. Y'all, y'all doing good. Hmm? What if... We really believe that in order for us to survive, we have to eat this every day. When we can't imagine going seven days without eating natural food, but people go a month without picking up the Bible. What if we couldn't imagine a day without feeding on the word of God? Do you know how many seeds of faith and power and insight and visions and clarity and instructions we will receive if we fed ourselves the word as often as we eat. Second challenge is that we practice responding to the word. As much as you eat, respond. When you finish reading, ask yourself, God, what am I supposed to do with what I just read. Come on, somebody. Ask the Lord. I read what you said. What am I to do? And then, without hesitation, do it. Don't be like me and talk yourself out of it. Y'all know when God speaks to you, right? God speaks to you. You hear the word. It's confirmed, firmed, and it is clear. And then you talk yourself out of it. Mm -mm, not this year. No, ma'am. No, sir. Practice responding to the word. I'm getting ready to pray. But I'm going to pray a bold prayer. My prayer today for each of us is that God will remove the very concept of impossible out of our hearts and our minds. That we get to the place where we don't even understand what impossible means. Like somebody's going to have to explain to us what that means. That we'll never look at a situation and think that's impossible. That the word impossible, the concept of impossible will be deleted from our vocabulary, but will be ripped out of our hearts. That we can't even imagine that something can be impossible. Hallelujah to God. That we will look at our situations and say, I know it can be done. Because all things are possible. Man, ain't that? Can you, how would your life be different if you didn't understand 
the words can't and impossible. What if you never looked at anything else as impossible? That there's not, never a dream or vision or movement of the spirit or leading of the spirit that tells you to do something that you don't even imagine that it's not going to happen or it's not going to get done. What would you be doing today if, you, if no one ever taught you that there were some things that were impossible? How would your life be different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pray because for those of you who are going to respond to this word today, there's some words in your vocabulary that are going to be pulled out of your spirit because they have produced doubt and fear and procrastination and excuses because you have accepted that this is impossible. Who do you want healed that the doctor said it's impossible? Who do you want to be reached with the gospel and they have said it's impossible for them to be reached? What do you want to experience in God that you have allowed the adversary to convince you it is impossible? I come to you as a messenger of God today that says in heaven there is no such thing as impossible because heaven has already seen nothing turn into something. You may not have it, you don't have to have it. If you need it, God will speak it into existence. If he can speak the world into existence, what little thing do you have need of that he can't speak it into existence? Lord, have mercy. I don't care if nobody else has been healed from it. God can speak and you can be healed from it. I don't care if nobody else has been able to do it. God can speak and you can be doing. God is not dependent upon what exists. If it doesn't exist and he wants it, he speaks it and it comes to pass. And you know what he said in his word? He said, you shall have what you say. If you speak to this mountain and have faith and don't doubt this mountain i don't know what your mountain is but this mountain will be removed and cast into the sea now there are some things that he's going to speak but then there's other things that you're going to speak he said if you speak hallelujah somebody needs to start talking to your mountains in your life and says you it is impossible that you're going to stay here. You got to go. Listen, I'm not climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I'm speaking to the mountain and it shall be removed. Because there's nothing impossible. Let's pray. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Help me call on Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Your name is great hallelujah jesus 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 god we thank you for your word today hallelujah it tells us that you come that we might have life and life more abundantly we thank you lord that it's not your will for us to live in fear and doubt and frustration but it is your will for us to live in hope in peace in victory we thank you lord that we are more than conquerors we thank you lord that you said in your word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper so god we call on your name today and we ask you oh god to give us the kind of faith that sees the invisible, that expects the unexpectable, that receives the impossible. God, give us the faith that conquers anything, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will help us to develop the practice of hearing your word, that we will hear your word in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, that we will have an appetite for your word. Give us a hunger and thirst for your word God in the name of Jesus that we will hear your word and God give us the faith the faith that works the faith that performs the faith that responds hallelujah in the name of Jesus give us the faith that will move us into places we never thought we could go give us the faith 
that will put us before people that we never thought we would stand before. Give us the faith to reach people that we never thought that we will be able to reach. In the name of Jesus is our prayer. And now, God, we boldly ask you to remove the very concept of impossible from our hearts and from our minds. I pray, God, that you will pull it up out of the root, that we won't be able to receive something as impossible. That when you speak, it will never cross our mind that it's not going to happen. That when you speak, it will never cross our mind that it can't be done. God, I don't know where the concept came from and why so many of us live by this concept of impossible. But God, it is a direct uh, against the, what you said in your word. Your word says that all things are possible to them that believe. So give us, oh God, the spirit of possibility and expectation that we approach every situation expecting a miracle, expecting a breakthrough, expecting you to perform your word, and we expect that we will see things that have never been seen before. For eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard the things Things that you have in store for them that love your appearing hallelujah and so we thank you that we leave here today expecting great things it is so in Jesus name amen just for a few minutes can we lift our hands and worship God see the impossible taking place in your life. Doesn't matter how down you are today, how much you had to fight through today, it is possible that you can leave here better than you can. God can turn that situation around. Hallelujah. There's nobody he can't reach, no problem he can't solve, no vision he can't bring to pass. If he gave you the vision, he'll make provision for it. Live in expectation. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are or how much you have. All things are possible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. brothers and my sisters, live in the possibilities of God. Remove the limits off of your life, of the limit of your faith. Be bold and courageous. Step out there. Do it. Respond. If you know that it's the voice of the Lord speaking to you, step out. Go for it. Believe his word. Trust his provision. And watch. In the next few months, you're going to see some things change. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. When you raise your expectation, God will perform. Why? How do I know that? Because the Bible said he's able to do exceedingly abundantly up and above all that you can ask or think. So no matter how high your thoughts are, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask. Here's what I love. Because there's some things that we're bold enough to ask. So he'll do it seemingly abundantly above all that we ask. But I'm glad that he didn't stop with what we ask because there's some things that we think and they're so out there that we're afraid to ask. 
So he says, if you are, if you ask for it or even think about it, hallelujah, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above. Why don't you raise your level of thinking? Hallelujah. What are you thinking about? Hallelujah. What are you looking for? What are you expecting from the Lord? He says, I can do better than that. There is nothing that you can think that's better than what I can do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to let y'all go. But I want you to know what God wants for us is so much better than anything we could ever want for ourselves. What we plan for ourselves is nothing compared to what God has planned for us. I want you to live with expectation. We're going to dis dismiss, but if you want prayer today, please come quickly to the altar. We will pray for you once we have dismissed. I want everybody in this room to leave here today expecting better than what you were expecting when you came in here. I want you to look at those situations that you gave up on and said, I can't, I'm not even going to try anymore. Look at it from the eyes of impossibility. Next week, we're going to talk about limitless wisdom. The, one of the reasons why all things are possible to them that believe is because he gives us wisdom. He says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So there's nothing that you need to figure out that God doesn't know how to figure out. So you don't actually, you don't have to know how to figure it out. All you have to do is ask. Because he says he gives wisdom to every man that asks and he doesn't hold back. Huh? All right, that's next week. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you have raised our level of expectation today. Hallelujah. And I declare that we are going to raise our level of response. Oh, yes. That we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers of also, hallelujah, that our response will not be meager and minor, but expect a major blessing. No, God, we are going to respond in a major way, expecting a major breakthrough, a major blessing, a major increase to the level that we respond. Hallelujah to God. We know that you would do it for us. I pray your blessings upon all of us who have gathered here today. I pray your peace upon us, that we will seek your face daily. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen hallelujah peace be with you if you need prayer please come hi my name is tim brewington and i am the pastor of fellowship church thank you for viewing this broadcast today for more information about fellowship church please check us out at www.thefellowshipmn.org god bless you